Hello again sports fans, this is a comparison between my Quantum Overlord video receiver which I normally use for FPV flights and the new eShine EV800T headset which I bought to fly my uh, new Nano Talon which I'm currently just using for short range stuff. So Nano Talon has been set up pretty much as it came out of the box and I'm flying it with my Aurora 9 2.4 GHz radio with an FR Sky compatible receiver. I'm using a 200 milliwatt uh, video transmitter and I've just installed a simple OSD with a GPS antenna to give me uh, speed and distance data. I've been pretty happy with the way the headset's been performing but today I decided I'd uh, see what sort of range I'm getting out of the 2.4 gigahertz and while I was doing that I thought well I might as well fire up the Overlord and uh, see how the two receivers stack up against each other. You may have noticed from the photos that my Overlord receiver has been modified slightly to give me a broader beam towards the front. I'll be just leaving that uh, sitting on the tripod, I won't be going near it for the duration of the flight. So I'm actually standing in the flight box wearing the headset and facing roughly straight forward. I'm currently just doing some uh, slow circuits of the field just to make sure everything's okay and I'll be heading out uh, due west to see how far I'm comfortable with going. The Nano Talon stabiliser doesn't have a return to home capability so I'm a little bit worried about what might happen if I fly beyond the range. I'm pretty comfortable though that I should be able to get out to at least two and a half or three kilometres uh, before I start to fail. I've bodged up a connection to the RSSI output of the receiver and attached it to the OSD but it seems to be fluctuating between zero and a hundred percent so I'm not quite sure what's going on with it. I do a few wider circuits just to see if I can detect any change in the reading but uh, it doesn't change really at all so I don't think I'll rely too much on it on the uh, long range section of the flight. So at this stage I'm seeing very few glitches on the uh, headset video. Usually they're associated with flying down to the south end of the uh, strip where there's a few trees that I go behind so I'm not really concerned about that. So I'll do one more wide sweep out to about 400 metres and still don't see any change to the uh, RSSI indication, it's either 100% or zero so I decide I might as well just head out and uh, keep an eye on it.
So it's around about here I start to see a little bit of uh, graininess in the screen and occasionally losing a bit of colour but I only really need to turn my head a little bit more to uh, bring the quality back so that's pretty good, I'm pretty comfortable. So I'm out past two kilometres, I'm still not seeing any change in the RSSI indication so I've pretty well written that off as a reliable indicator. I start to get a few more breakups, I'm able to recapture the picture but I'm getting pretty nervous at this point I must admit. So at this point I'm thinking I'll be happy to get to two and a half kilometres and just as I hit it I get a major glitch and uh, lose my nerve, and turn it around and start heading back. So I start to see a few little glitches and I'm, uh, I'm not sure whether it's I'm not holding my head up high enough or I'm being blocked by the uh, hill to the north of it so I navigate a little bit further south to make sure I'm uh, in the clear and uh, move my head around a little bit to see if I can improve things. Now that I'm looking at the video I see the Overlord had a couple of minor dropouts so I suspect the main problem was uh, being blocked by the hill. So I do a bit of a circuit just to uh, see whether there's any dead spots and uh, really I don't see any problem at this range at all. So at this point I decide to fly back towards the hill uh, and lose some altitude and come in home fairly low just to see how much of an impact the hill has. But it looks uh, like it's not much of an impact at this range. So at this point the uh, DVR on the headset decides to close the current file off and start another one which is the only thing that really annoys me about it at the moment. There may be a way to extend that file size but I haven't found it yet. So I'm pretty happy with the range I got out of the Nanotech given that I don't have a return to home. 
and uh, I'm also very happy with the quality of the DVR coming out of the headset. It's certainly a lot easier to uh, carry that around than the uh, base station I use for the long range stuff. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased all around.